13 sites. It's the Eastern Cemetery, um, which is the gatehouse there, um, and the administration building. So whenever that's that's us, I guess, whenever you come to, to see the Geelong, do business with Geelong Cemeteries Trust in any way, shape or form, it's the Eastern Cemetery is where we are. That's a Catholic chapel at the Eastern Cemetery that's actually owned by the Catholic Church. It's not owned by us, so, which, is, which is rather nice because any maintenance that's got to be done to it, um, they foot the bill, not us. It's just a nice photograph of the Eastern Cemetery looking up towards the gatehouse. This is the Western Cemetery, a nice memorialisation area at, the, uh, at the, the Norwood Street entrance of the cemetery. This is the Apted Gardens at the front of the cemetery where the house used to be on the Northern Road. Barrowwood Hill Cemetery, the children's section um, to the left there, and a, uh, a water feature that, uh, that was installed, built and installed by our staff. It's a reticulated system, but uh, it's very nice. So I said before, memorialisation it used to be uh, with the uh, columbarium walls. Um, that was, they were probably the last of the uh, columbarium walls that we've built. The Highton Cemetery, Grovedale Cemetery, it's Memorial Rose Garden out there. Mount Denise Cemetery, which is uh, probably one of the nicest views that we have from our cemeteries. At the Mount Denise Cemetery, we have a uh, group of Vance Moon. Uh, He's a Victoria Cross recipient. He's actually buried at the Mount Denise Cemetery, um, and we built a memorial in his honour out there uh, also to promote the remains, which is uh, uh, a very nice memorial and, and well received. The Mount Moriac Cemetery, this is one of the new ones that we've taken over from the Surf Coast Council, and they approached us to take over their cemeteries. Um, we're doing, we're about to embark on substantial uh, earthworks out there to level the site and build it up in areas um, so that we can start putting a proper landscape plan in place. Um, Mount Moriac <coughs> Cemetery is, is one of those cemeteries, Eastern Cemetery used to be run with, by denominations of churches. The, the Mount Moriac Cemetery I think was run by the families that were out in the district who didn't want to get buried next to the other family. So we have pockets of graves all over the place, which uh, is a bit interesting when you're trying to landscape. The Winchell Sea Cemetery, uh, we've done substantial work to the Winchell Sea Cemetery since we took it over. Um, we have done a lot of community consultation with the people from the uh, from, from Winchell Sea, and uh, they were a bit sceptical when we took the place over. We gave them an undertaking that we would improve their cemetery and return it back to its, uh, its former glory that it used to enjoy. And, uh, we, we have uh, lived up to their expectations and the place looks fantastic down there now. We've put in some, uh, this is a very early um, photograph, we've put in uh, some rose memorials down there uh, as well um, to give them a few more options. The Lawn Cemetery, when we took that over, um, as you can see, no made roads, no drainage, lots of erosion, um, not much fun. So we decided that we would put the uh, curbs and roads and drainage and everything down there. Uh, the normal roads that we put in are concrete curbs with, with bitumen between them, pretty standard stuff. Uh, once we started down there in the excavation, we found out that it didn't have a base that, uh, that we could make solid enough to put bitumen on. So uh, we changed the design on the run, basically. So it's got concrete roads and drainage down there instead of the bitumen, so that it will support uh, the equipment, we've planted lots of trees down there uh, to soften the, uh, the concrete runway up a bit. Flinders Memorial Park's one of our sites that we've de developed from a greenfield site. We purchased uh, some land from a farmer out there, about 64 acres of it. We've developed the first, two, uh, the first 10 acres, front 10 acres um, out there, um, and uh, that's, that's been uh, well, well accepted by and by the community. So we had to look at land out in that general area. There's three main growth corridors for Geelong. One's Lara, one's Surf, or one's towards Torquay, the Armstrong Creek area, and the other one's the Ballarat Peninsula. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you more about it shortly. So that's just some of the development of Flinders Memorial Park at Lara. Some nice positions out there. 
Hill Lumber Memorial Park and Crematorium. It used to be at Mount Dede, but now it's at Armstrong Creek. We didn't shift, they just renamed us. The trust, when designing the crematorium, that was designed back in, when was it? Open 89? 88. 88. Um, so the design obviously happened prior to that. What the trust embarked to do was to have a design of a building out there that didn't date. And I think um, you would have to agree that for some, something that's built back in, uh, in 88, 89, uh, it's still a very modern looking building. Some of the different uh, memorialisation options. There's a family uh, cremated remains memorials that we have in the grounds out at, uh, at GMP. They have been very, very popular out there. Just a view of the inside of our, uh, of our chapel. You can see the two big television screens up there. Um, you can pretty much run somebody's life story during a service up there. We also have the provision for webcasting, so, so it doesn't matter where a family member is anywhere in the world, they can watch the, uh, the service happen in real time. The new, uh, the new audio visual system that we, uh, that we have out there that's uh, got cameras that do all sorts of wonderful things if you can make them work. Leopold Cemetery, uh, it's just a lovely little cemetery on Kensington Road. Port Island Conservatory, that's just one of the, uh, the new memorial sections that we, de that we developed in the garden in front of the cemetery. Just to, uh, to brighten up the front of it a little bit. That's a beautiful cemetery too with a lovely view also. And Drysdale Cemetery, which everybody here would be very familiar with, I'm sure. Some lovely memorials in it. Once again, another cemetery that's got a spectacular view also. No matter where you stand at Drysdale Cemetery, it's a lovely view. New Rose Garden Memorials at the front and the, uh, and the, the Shrub Native Memorial Garden that's been there for some time. And this is the bit that you wanted to get to, I am sure. The last meeting down here, we got um, asked several questions about what we were going to do with the land adjacent to the, uh, to the Drysdale Cemetery because everybody had heard that in the council rezoning down here that it was made available, it could have been rezoned into, um, I think it was high density dwellings down here, which would be worth a heck of a lot of money to sell that block of land. Uh, it would be worth a lot of money to us. And the community gave us a fairly clear indication that they didn't really want us to sell the cemetery. So we took that back to the trust and said, well, this is the time where we've got to make a decision. We're either going to go back down to, the, to Drysdale and consult with the, uh, with the community down there and tell them we're going to sell the land and why we, why we want to sell it, or we're going to make a commitment to keep it and develop it. Now, with the growth that's envisaged down on the Ballarat Peninsula, this particular piece of land, this particular piece of land isn't going to last long anyway. Okay? It will service the Drysdale area for a little while, but not for a long time. However, the fact of the matter is, it has been set aside for the cemetery, and the trust have decided that they will keep the land. They have passed a resolution to do so, and they have adopted this plan here, as the, as the proposed development works that, we will, that will take place. Now, it's not going to take place tomorrow or the next day, um, but it's been resolved that that is what will happen. Uh, this roadway here, uh, we've actually been waiting to have this public meeting down here before we start work on extending this through because down here is the next area that we're going to use as the wooden section of the cemetery. But we, we figured if we started constructing this roadway through here, everybody would have already decided that, um, that we were selling the land off. And we didn't want everybody to get the wrong idea. So uh, we haven't done anything until we came down and talked to them. So rest assured, this land is going to remain as the cemetery for the, the Drysdale Clifton Springs community. I'm just surprised. Uh, well, you, can, you can see the resolution of the trust. That's probably yeah. That's probably got more power behind it. 
I'm sorry, Daryl. I'm just surprised that the trust would determine that that's the the layout for the new area without actually consulting the community about that bit. Uh, well, we don't usually consult on cemetery planning. Right. Um, what we do do is is provide the burial options and memorialisation options that uh, that the community, I suppose, are asking for and requesting as we go through. And that changes. That's why I'm saying this is a proposed development plan, mm -hmm. which means probably the road layout and everything like that will be what will go in. As for the types of memorials in these areas, they may change as community wants and needs change. So it wouldn't matter if what I consulted with the community right now in in 20 years' time, that won't be what the community wants. So it's up to us, as a cemeteries trust, um, that you know, professionally run cemeteries, to listen to what the community are wanting all the time yeah. and adapt our changes to. What, what's your expected um, lifetime of this? How long will it take to before it's it's full? Look, that's that's really that's. I can give you a rough figure, yep. but what I can't tell you is 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 whether the cremation rate is, how much that's going to change between now and, I can tell you now, you know, that's probably 20 years. 20 years, right. You know, that's it might 10, be 20. 10,000 yeah. burials, right. that'll yep. take. Uh, the design drawn quite a few years ago, uh, and the design made, uh, designed this way to actually pull the drainage, because as you know, it's quite a lot of fall yeah. down the bottom. Yeah. So it had to have a reticulation holding basins to actually uh, retain the water before it actually went and caused flooding. For the houses further 